Okay, just when I'm about to start recording, my neighbor is doing some work. So I just did a video on this. I pretty much just show you guys this video of Serena, the NAACP. There's two things about the voting right I'm going to talk about. The first one, which was not what I intended on talking about, but it, I saw it, so let me just mention it. Today we celebrate the 55th an anniversary of the Voting Rights Act. So that's by NAACP. The mission of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People is to ensure political education. Okay, let me go into it. All right, uh, where is it? Uh, I have said this before, and it will say it again. The voting is precious. It is almost sacred. It is the most powerful, nonviolent. In a democracy, the right to vote is the most powerful, nonviolent tool we have. Some of you have heard me say that the right to vote is precious, almost sacred. In my hearts of hearts, I believe that we should make it simple and convenient for all of our citizens to be part of the democratic process. Tool we have in democracy by John Lewis sometime last year, uh, 2019. All right, so I will put the link of all of this. So I'm here for this. Um, is it that? Is it the same thing? All right, let me, you know what? Let me just read this quick. Uh, I'll just put the link of this. You guys could go and read that. Okay, so it's pretty much explained. All right, despite the fact that African American and other racial and ethnic minority Americans are guaranteed the right to vote by the Fifth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which was passed just after the Civil War in 1870. States and local munis municipalities continue to use tactics such as poll taxes, literacy tests, and outright intima intimidation to stop people from casting free un unfettered ballot. During the Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s, in fact, just five days after Martin Luther King Jr. led the march on Selma, Alabama, President Lyndon Johnson announced his intention to pass a Federal Voting Rights Act to ensure that no federal, state, or local government may in any way impede people from registering to vote or voting because of their race or ethnicity. Uh, if you look at the last election, the national election, there, oh, actually even the last mid-election, there were a lot of tactics that were used to prevent minorities from voting. And few of those people who got elected, let's say from Florida and Georgia, uh, there was a lot of really bad tactic that happened. I don't even think they went, but I think many of these were. Okay, in 1965, President Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act into law. Most provisions in the Voting Rights Act in 1965, and specifically the uh, portions that guarantee that no one may be denied the right to vote because of his or her race or color, are permanent, but some enforcement-related provisions have required reauthorization over the years. Origin originally, in 1965, legislators hope that within five years the problem will be resolved and there will be no further need for these enforcement-related provisions. However, it proved necessary to extend these in 1970, and again in 1975, and in 1982. They were set to expire in 2007, but were extended for another 25 years with the July 2007 reauthorization vote. There were three enforcement-related provision of the Voting Rights Act that will have expired in August 20, uh, 20, 2007 unless we are reauthorized. The first is Section 5, which requires certain jurisdictions to obtain approval or pre-clearance from the U.S. Department of Justice or the U.S. District Court of NDC before they can make any changes to voting practices or procured, uh, procedures, federal approval will be given only after the jurisdiction proves the proposed change does not have the purpose or effect of denying or abiding the right to vote on account of race or color. Secondly, in Section 203, which requires certain jurisdiction to provide bilingual language assistance to voters and communities where there is a concentration of citizens who are limited English proficient. 
Uh, this provision was added to the Voting Rights Act in 1975. The third provision are those in Section 6 through 9, which authorized the federal government to send federal election examiners and observers to certain jurisdictions covered by Section 5, which, which there is evidence of attempt to intimidate minority voters at the poll. The hearing held in 2005 and 2006 in the House and Senate found a new gen generation of tactics, including at-large election and ex uh, exoneration, last-minute poll place changes, and redistricting, which have had a discriminatory impact on voters, especially racial and ethnic minorities American voters. Thus, H.R. 9 was introduced with strong bipartisan support in the House and the Senate to reauthorize the expiring portion of the VRA Voting Rights Act and allow the federal government to address these new challenges. So today's Voting Rights Act anniversary event. So this is the part that I want to share with you, and I think some of you will like that. So here, that's, I just saw it by Emily Ramshaw, big news from At 19 News, Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, is joining the lineup of the 19th represents of the fi final uh, sessions of the week next Friday, August 14, register now. So this is how this go. All right, so the 19th represent 2020 Virtual Summit. Goldman Sachs, so there's all, a couple of things here. So this is what this is about. Welcome to the 19th ninth, represents. A century ago, the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution made voting our country's most fundamental mode of civic participation a right regardless of gender. But this watershed moment in our democracy excluding millions of women including women of color from the ballot box for generation the 19th was founded to shine a light on unfinished business of the 19th amendment and empower women particularly those under undeserved by and underrepresented in american media with the information community tools they need to be equal participant in our democracy this August, we commemorate the suffrage centennial with the 19th represents presented by Goldman Sachs and into it a week of virtual event that raises the voices of women, past and present, who are reshaping the American story. Join us August 10th to August 14th for a series of conversations with prominent women in politics, civic engagement, journalism, and the art. View full schedule, our um, outstanding line of speakers. Registration is absolutely free. I'll leave this here so I could register. So let me go on the thread. So here she's explaining. In the Department of the Surveil, the Duchess reached out to us. She said the 19th News vision of building a diverse and representative newsroom that covers women and other undeserved people with nuance. Empathy spoke to her immediately. She asked if she could interview me on storytelling that lift up those who are too often underrepresented in the media and what it means to build a media outlet with gender equity, diversity, and community at its core. If they continue at the rate they're going, they are going to be stripped of their royal privileges because it is strictly forbidden for a member of the British royal family to enter into politics, whether it is in England or in America. And in fact, it's even worse in America because America is a former colony. It's a sovereign state. We have a special relationship with America, all of which is being jeopardized by Meghan's comment that she intends to enter American politics. Harry and Meghan, please, I beg of you, everybody who has your interests at heart is hoping you will put a muzzle on your mouth and start to behave responsibly. I beg of you. If you're after column inches, continue. If you're after being taken seriously, zip it up. 
all next week the 19th news journalist will go deep on the politics and policy of this moment with some of the nation top women leaders we are looking forward to rounding out the program by having the table turn on us see you on the 14th wow this is fantastic oh this person said the same thing uh fantastic wow congrats on the magnificent lineup of powerful women and of course a big fan of the duchess I will not miss this event already registered. Please be aware that there are trolls and haters from Britain who might start posting negative stuff about Duchess of Sussex. Please block. We are going to see Megan. <laughs> Alright, so this is what I wanted to tell you guys. And I just saw it. I'm probably going to register in a few. So that's sort of the voting right act sort of uh, part of it. Um, so I'm glad I read this because it sort of gave you a foundation, a basis of what this other thing is going to be about. gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. McGovern, for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to oppose this rule and to support the previous question. In a democracy, the right to vote is the most powerful non-violent tool we have. Many people march and protested for the right to vote. Some gave a little blood and others lost their lives. Some of you have heard me say that the right to vote is precious, almost sacred. In my hearts of hearts, I believe that we should make it simple and convenient for all of our citizens to be part of the democratic process. It should not matter whether you're black or white, Latino, Asian American, or Native American. We should be able to participate in the democratic process. On March 7, 1965, I gave a little blood on the Edmund Pettus Bridge for the right to vote. Before the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was passed, some people had to count the number of bubbles in a bar of soap, the number of jelly beans in a jar. And all across America today, when people go out to attempt to vote, they stand in long, immovable lines. That's not right, it's not fair, and it's not just. We can do better and we must do better. We have a moral obligation, a mission, and a mandate to empower all of the American people, not just a select few. We must do what is right, what is fair, and what is just. Today, our democracy is under attack by forces within and forces abroad. We need to fix it and fix it now. For these reasons, I'm proud to sponsor H.R. 12, the Voter Empowerment Act, with my friends and my colleagues. It is a good bill, a necessary bill, and a patriotic bill to protect and to preserve our voting system. I urge each and every one of you to support the previous question, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Jim from Massachusetts. So take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. Thanks for watching.